Before the 20th century, civilians in Britain were mostly untouched by war, but this changed on 19 January 1915 with the first air raids of World War I by the German Zeppelin. Presently, historians have described it as a total war, a global war involving both civilians and armed forces on a large scale. World War I was a conflict of many firsts. While the Great War saw the introduction of mass recruitment of the public as well as the deployment of tank warfare, it was also the first time that heavier aircraft were used in a military offensive. When German airships hit the east coast of England in January 1915, it was civilian targets that bore the brunt of some of the first air raids. Count von Zeppelin, a retired German military officer, flew his first airships in 1900. They were lighter than air, filled with hydrogen, with steel frames. When the war began in 1914, the German armed forces had several Zeppelins, each capable of traveling at about 85 miles per hour and carrying two tons of bombs. With military stalemate on the Western Front, they decided to use them against towns and cities in England. The first raid was on Great Yarmouth and King's Lynn in January 1915. Use the resources in this lesson to learn how the people of Hull responded to Zeppelin raids in their city. Mathie's airship is a giant cigar-shaped cylinder filled with gas bubbles filled with highly flammable hydrogen. It flies only because it is lighter than air. A giant ultralight frame of duralumin beams and steel wire supports an array of 19 airbags made of animal film, cotton, and glue that, when inflated, hold 2 million cubic feet of air and fill up nearly the entire interior space. Stretching outside the frame was a lightweight cotton envelope, coated with dope, tied together, and stretched. The undercarriage of the duralumin frame formed a trench that ran the length of the ship, and here were sacks of ballast water, fuel tanks, and bomb racks. Underneath the cabin is the forward-driven gondola and three motor gondolas, one large towards the rear, and two smaller. The airship's six engines, which power a series of six propellers, one in the back of each gondola, and two suspended just below the hull, have a top speed of 63 miles per hour. Direction is controlled by a cable running from the front gondola to the movable rudder, and the lift is attached to the ends of the four caudal fins. A triumph of German engineering, with a length of nearly 200 meters and a width of 24 meters, the 31 lira is larger than a battleship. The crew of an airship is all volunteers. There are about 20 in total, half of which are mechanics servicing engines, jobs that require ongoing maintenance and occasional in-flight repairs. Despite being warmed by the engines during the many hours of the flight, the mechanics were still struck by a shrill roar and a suffocating mixture of oil and exhaust fumes. On the other hand, in the control vehicle, the commander, the operating officer, the navigator, the two junior officers operating the rudder and elevators, and two other people working in the soundproof wireless compartment are all subject to bear the harsh cold. Even in summer, the temperature can drop below 25 degrees centigrade. At high altitudes, the crew wears thick woolen underwear, blue navy uniforms, leather overalls, fur coats, scarves, goggles, leather helmets, leather gloves in thick wool, and large felt-covered boots. They are sustained by generous portions of bread, sausages, stews, chocolate, and thermos that brew strong coffee. The atmospheres are made from a hard shell filled with hydrogen gas, a highly flammable and explosive gas. The motor has a forward-driven propeller. Armed with five machine guns, the Zeppelins carry a lethal load of bombs. As the Zeppelins buzzed toward England, their radio messages were picked up by remote stations, and patrol boats and coastal observation posts watched them in the sky. Early warning was called to Room 40 at the Admiralty in London, and from there it was announced, let's take air action. The lights were on, guns were readied, and planes at dozens of airports darted to life and were whisked across the lawn to take off. Hey, quick question before we move on, have you ever hit the like button and subscribe to our channel? Dot more raids followed. On May 31, 1915, a Zeppelin occurred in London, killing five people and injuring 35. Edinburgh was attacked by two Zeppelins on the night of April 3, 1916. Zeppelins appeared to be invincible, attacking at will and taking no losses.
There were air raids on Lincolnshire, East Riding, and Hull during 1915 and 1916 that resulted in deaths and hundreds of injuries and many more air raid warnings. The local press agreed not to cover the Zeppelin raids so as not to cause panic. Nationwide, 1,400 people were killed and more than 3,400 wounded in air raids during World War I. The defenses against them didn't seem to be enough, the morale of the masses was low, and people were extremely frightened by these raids. At first, there was not much the British could do against this new air threat. The Zeppelins flew too high for the planes of the day to approach them to shoot them down. Their only real flaw is that the hydrogen airbags used for the elevators are highly flammable. Normal bullets can penetrate airbags, but something else is required if the Zeppelin is made to explode. With the invention of the Buckingham incendiary bullet, which not only penetrated air pockets but ignited hydrogen, the Zeppelin threat was effectively neutralized. Specifically, that fall, British pilots deployed a new weapon. No longer reliant on dropping bombs or exploding darts on the side, and standard machine gun ammunition seemingly did not affect the massive airbags, home defense squadrons now filled their ammunition belts with a mixture of munitions marker compounds and newly designed explosive and incendiary bullets. The idea is to blow a hole in the fabric of a balloon and then ignite the released hydrogen as it mixes with the air. This new weapon claimed three airships in one month. Now it claimed a quarter. May these Zeppelin shot up 200 feet, hung in the air for a moment, and then began to fall. The gas cells explode into hot balls of fire. The envelopes were ripped and thrown into the night sky. Flames rose to the sides, and the airship became a great torch, glowing orange, yellow and white, hissing and roaring as it plunged to Earth. In June 1917, the German army stopped using Zeppelins to bomb attacks on Britain. Despite being a great psychological weapon, they did very little damage to the war effort. Of the 115 Zeppelins used by the German army, 53 were lost, and 24 were damaged beyond repair. In the UK, 528 people, mostly civilians, were killed and more than 1,000 wounded in the Zeppelin attacks. The British government knew it had to adapt to survive, and in 1918 the RAF was formed. This will prove important in the ongoing and devastating World War. Zeppelin's bombing raids indicated the war on an entirely new front and were the first stepping stone in a new era of civil war, leading in time to the deadly Blitz raids. Writer D. H. Lawrence described Zeppelin raids in a letter to Lady Ottoline Morell, then we saw the Zeppelin above us, just ahead, amid a gleaming of clouds. Then there were flashes near the ground, and the shaking noise. It was like Milton, then there was war in heaven. I cannot get over it, that the moon is not queen of the sky by night, and the stars are the lesser lights. It seems the Zeppelin is in the zenith of the night, golden like a moon, having taken control of the sky, and the bursting shells are the lesser lights. And you, what do you think about this Zeppelin? Please comment below to discuss. As always, if you like this video, hit the like button to support us. Subscribe and hit the notification bell if you want to be one of the first to see my latest videos. And that makes me more motivated to make more videos. Thanks.